Welcome to HTO Football's FA Cup Final Special. In the blue corner, we've got Woking FC's Max Kretschmar. And in the red corner, we've got the beautiful Games Butch. I hope you enjoy it. Who's going to win that cup? Um, welcome to HTO Football, Max. I hope you're well. I believe we've got an FA Cup goal scorer himself on the line. Yeah, um, I think I've scored a couple of times in the first and second round proper, maybe. Um, yeah, not quite made the final, but uh, you know what we're going to talk about today. But yeah, yeah, it's a great competition, and I'm, I guess I'm lucky to have scored in it. Yeah, Andrew often says that he played in some prelim round for it, like whatever, however many rounds that go, um, how many think, rounds yeah, were away was, from the main draw. I think it was a preliminary round for Cot Fosters many moons ago. Yeah, <laughs> it, 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 it didn't get on the goal scoring sheet, but um, yeah, or make the round proper. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. That's, but you must be looking forward to the final Saturday. Yes. Um, obviously, we had a bit of a well, it was a bit more comfortable than I expected it on the weekend getting that Champions League. Now that's done. Um, I don't know, I fancy us against Arsenal really. Um, we've had a very inconsistent season, but Lampard, especially as a player, seems to turn up in the final. So I'm, I'm pretty confident. Um, and obviously, if we, do not, if we don't win, then it's probably not the end of the world. But I do expect us to uh, have a bit more experience than the Arsenal players in the in finals. So. Yeah, it's interesting you mentioned that about the, the, the sort of the, the pressure element. I feel like both teams going into that final, there's not so much of a, it's not a desperate situation for either manager. Would you agree, Max? Yeah, I think obviously both managers are new to their clubs this season. Uh, a big, big up Lampard because he's had his, he's definitely had his uh, arms tied this season, obviously with the uh, transfer ban, which everyone knows about. But yeah, I mean, a trophy at the beginning of the season would have been a bonus, I would have said, and especially probably more so for Arteta, you know, picking that team up. Um, when Emery was kind of maybe leading them up a different path. So, you know, they started slowly with Arteta, but they've come come strong now. Um, but I guess the only problem with them is that only Arsenal could have beaten Liverpool and City and then lost to the Villa all in one week. So, um, yeah, for both managers, I think definitely it'll be definitely good, you know, silverware to pick up so early in their managerial mm. career. Yeah. I mean, Chelsea going to the, probably the slightly better informed side. Uh, Arsenal fans will be looking to rekindle the the same performance they achieved against Man City. Um, and obviously the momentum with Chelsea qualifying for the Champions League, as you mentioned. Lampard's won the trophy four times as a player. What are the chances? Are you confident that he's going to make it five for himself on, on Saturday? I am confident. Um, I'm much more confident. I think Giroud's a big player for us, even though he's been maybe a bit bit part player um, towards the, you know, the beginning of the season. But I just think when he plays... He holds the ball up much better than Tammy. Um, we can get, and obviously it's against his old club, so I'm sure he'll have something to prove. But yeah, he just brings Pulisic and these guys to, into the game. Mount as well. Um, I expect Pulisic to play. Um, I think he's been our best player since lockdown, you know, and the project restart. So I'm looking forward to him. And yeah, I think Arsenal did really well against City and Liverpool. They sat really, really deep because both them teams have a lot of possession. And Chelsea do too, but I just think Arsenal might think they'd fancy their chances more against us than um, they would have against Liverpool or, or, or City. So I think there'll be space there and behind and I think Pulisic and maybe William. We don't know who's going to play, but we'll have, we'll have space running behind. We've just got to be careful of the reverse, getting hit on the break with Aubameyang and, and players like that. But yeah, I'm, I'm pretty confident. Um, yeah, yeah, you Chelsea. fancy it to be quite an open game then, given that. I think... Um... You know, Chelsea would obviously have been good going forward, but there has been some question marks about going the other yeah. way. The other way. Sure it'll be open, but we just concede so many goals. Like I think it's over 50 in the league. Like Going yeah. next season, there's no way we can win or maybe even finish second above those two heavyweights with conceding 45 goals, let alone 50-plus. So I, I think that's one of the most standout records that will never be beaten in the Premier League is that Mourinho team that only conceded 15 league goals. 15 league goals. I genuinely don't think that will ever be beaten, not in our lifetimes anyway. That is, is astonishing. Um, I remember Arsenal conceded something. I think it was it's 17 or 19. I'll go 19 in the 1990 season. The 91 season, we only lost one game. And that was a record for many years. And like, I, I, yeah, I just can't see us. It was something like that. And um, But 15 is just a joke. It was just like, yeah. you know... So I'm not sure it'll be open, but I just see goals. I don't know that kind yeah. of predicts itself. Yeah. Um, mistake. No, yeah, I know what you mean though, but there's mistakes in both those sides, isn't it? We know about him at Chelsea as well, and we've seen the best and worst of him since Project Restart. But 
yeah, I mean, both defences are pretty pretty weak, um, so I expect goals, yeah. Although, I reckon it'll be probably a KG opening. It wouldn't be, and it wouldn't be an open final with Jose in charge, would it? That's for sure. No. I think, um, yeah. I mean, Arsenal fans, I've been speaking to a few Arsenal fans that recently that think that their best approach is to probably try and replicate the, the, the defensive performance and strategy that they applied against Man City. And I, I think they might do that. I just wonder if Arteta's side will think, you know what, let's, let's sit in, soak up pressure and hit Chelsea on the break where they're quite vulnerable. Yeah. I'd be more worried if they did do that because those are the teams we've struggled against this season, mm. um, especially at home early on the season. Couldn't win at all. Like, I think we won like maybe one out of eight of our first home games or something yeah, like yeah. that. Mm. And just, teams just got behind the ball, your Bournemouth, your Burnleys, and we, we really struggled to break them down. So that's what impressed me most in the semi final. They The second goal was massive, Aubameyang's second, because City were really cranking it up and they were they, they couldn't get out Arsenal, but they were defending really well on the edge of their box. Mm-hmm. So that goal on the break, that, that killed the tie completely. But they did look pretty resolute in defence and obviously City probably will create more chances than we did. But yeah. they're very well against Man U who looked a bit, mm. a bit leggy in the semi-final. And, mm. um, you know, yeah, I just think we've got a, a few more match winners. You keep Aubameyang quiet, Lacazette blows mm. hot and cold. And, you know, I think... Probably Tierney's probably their their best you know, best player from right back. So, be interesting to see whether they go three at the back, Chelsea as mm. well, because obviously mm. that went well for us against United, then mm. terribly against Liverpool, and then well against Wolves. So, mm. not sure how. And also Arsenal have been doing four and three mm. in the season as well. Obviously, great pedigree in the FA Cup, both sides as well. Another quick stat, but like um, in the last twenty years between the two of them, they've won something like eleven of the trophies, Arsenal and Chelsea. Um, so kind of dominated the FA Cup in the two thousands. Um, but obviously, a bit of revenge maybe on the Arsenal mind for Baku, sort of a bit of an embarrassing performance yeah. there. Um, so that might be in their minds a bit, surely. I think that was a send off for Hazard. Really, he was definitely. I definitely think he's the best player we've ever seen at Chelsea. Like, not the greatest. You think of Lampard, Terry, Drogba, but literally the best. Quality. Uh, yeah. Hazard was just frightening for a couple of those title-winning seasons and even last year. Um, yeah, and just obviously hoping, been really promising from Pulisic, especially filling those boots are really hard and obviously had injuries at the beginning. But I know a lot of my Chelsea fans in the group text and that are buzzing off him and think he can be a Hazard. I just go... Mm. Wait, Hazard was on a different planet. He's on his way. He's doing well, but I don't know. He was an exceptional player. That's the pressure looked- that comes, isn't it? He did that run, run the other night, um, it was a great, lovely Maisie run against Paul. Paul, and they were like, "Oh, look, Hazard, it's Hazard," and we're like, "You've got to relax because you know that's the danger when you, you great players leave. The pressure on the people that come after them is so so." See, so Hazard just did that every game. I just watched him a lot when I went and watched them, and also just up close, just seeing him in the flesh, like just doesn't lose the ball. Did never lost possession. Either one or foul, or you know, kept it in possession. Let alone all the magical stuff he did going forward. Did it to Arsenal a few times as well. That goal at Stamford Bridge yeah. when he sort of had there's, there's, his ass. there's that. There's shades of that in uh, Pulisic with that low centre of gravity, isn't there? Yeah. He's lightning yeah. Pulisic. We saw against Man City as well at home, and um, you can see a mistake from you know one or two Arsenal defenders and him nipping in like he did against City. But yeah, I mean, I think he's going to have a really big season for us next season. But where does he play? Um, I think he'll definitely start, but um, it's a big worry of mine. We're signing some fantastic players, but we're not addressing the huge issue in goal at centre-back and probably even a left-back. So two, two centre-backs, a left-back and a goalie, is thing, uh, I think we have to get, but that's a lot of money there. And Rumours of getting Havertz as well doesn't look like we'll have enough money to do all of that. But mm. yeah, Seems to be strengthening in the strongest area. Yeah, like it's like when you're on Football Manager, it's impossible to not buy another number ten. But you need a defender when it's like that, really. So um, we get—I feel like we're going to be incredible next season, but we're just, we still might have the same problems. Like it'll... yeah, they, 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 Chelsea have been that side this season where whenever I've watched them, there's been half an hour spells where I've thought like this is better than than what Liverpool are producing, like yeah. as in like fluidity and movement and but. It's just been too inconsistent, has it? But then the early on in the process for Frank, to be fair. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think if you told us top four, I kind of expected. Um, even That's probably a bit arrogant from a Chelsea fan because had such success over the last 10, 15 years. But fancied us for top four. And obviously, like I said, the trophy would be um, the icing on the cake, really. 
Um, so, yeah, I mean, and we go again next season with a few more signings. But um, I think at Derby, they conceded a few goals when he was manager there. So, I think he's trying to get that clock blueprint where it's high intensity without the ball and we have the ball a lot more than them. Mm. Uh, a lot of possession against Wolves again. Yeah. But you've just got to have... They've got that Van Dyke at the back. We need someone at the back who's just going to not make mistakes and order everyone around, really. Yeah, I think a lot of, a lot of the reaction after that man, the semi final was that United looked leggy, too many games, possibly too much pressure on Bruno to play every minute. But I thought that Chelsea nullified United completely yeah. from the get go, and and it wasn't it wasn't a sit in performance nullify. It was an actual aggressive, yeah. didn't give Man United a second on the ball. Yeah. To make, I thought they made them look tired. I think that's what the best managers do. They they want to focus on their team rather than yeah. Of course, they'll have a little who's a danger man and do a lot, but a lot of them is imposing their style on the other team. And um, mm. yeah, especially in that game, like you said, some Solskjaer kept playing the same players, same players, and we also switched to a back three because they'd beaten mm. us three times already that season, mm. and they went back to type, really, what they'd beaten us three times with when really, yeah, it's hindsight, isn't it? They could have played the same team with Pogba and Greenwood and might have been a different game. But yeah, it was a really positive performance, really. Um, and like you said, we all said, I think I expect us to have more of the, more of the ball. It's just whether Arsenal will bring the A game defensively and Chelsea, really. Yeah. yeah it's what worries about you about the Arsenal team, if anything? I think it's about Miang, isn't it? He's... I watch him sometimes and he's on in a position which I don't think he likes on the left wing. He doesn't touch the ball, but he'll touch it in the box and it's a goal. We've mm. seen him score two goals on, on the weekend. And yeah, um, Reese James, whoever plays right back, could leave a bit of space back there and he could, uh, he could exploit it really. But um, anyone else? Like I said, I think Tierney's been really good after the break, but... Mm. I know yeah. they're more of a collective unit at the minute, aren't they? There's no real standout performances set for him. Yeah. Um, so I think yeah, it's been one been one criticism of Arsenal this season is that their their creative their creativity their yeah. numbers are quite low. I think they're sort of hovering around 13th, 14th in terms of chances created. Mm. Um, stopping that supply line to a Bemiang is going to be crucial, and if they do that, you just can't see Arsenal yeah. creating enough chances to score the amount of goals they might need to score. I feel like he's a 5 out of 10 or a 9 out of 10. There's not really much middle ground. When he plays on the wing, I think mm. the first game after lockdown, I think it was he played City. He didn't, he didn't touch the ball. They lost 3-0. Mm. And he, he's just not the right player for that. If you've, if you've got the ball, um, they could even play 5-3-2. Five, five, I, I sometimes think they'd be much better with both playing Lacazette and Aubameyang up front mm. together. But it's never not been, not been one of Arteta's plans, really. But, as I say, what are your memories of the 2017 Cup Final? Obviously, Chelsea went into that game as sort of slightly favoured as well, obviously, and uh, upset, upset the odds Arsenal there. Yeah, I mean, we, I remember the, the one I remember the most, I was much younger, I think Ray Parler scored a ridiculous long time. 2002, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so we've definitely, and like you said, Arsenal and Chelsea have actually dominated this competition quite for quite a while. But yeah, um, I, yeah, like you said, looking back on Baku, was probably the recent final. Obviously, yeah. we were far too good there, and Giroud played up front. I'm just... Pray and he goes as Giroud again, really. Um, Tammy was brilliant in the early season, but just think he brings a lot more. And you, when ex-players as well, they just tend to have the wood on on teams, don't they, as well? Like, you know, that, that Giroud-Arsenal link, it's yeah, just it's written way. then, isn't it? Yeah, and do and, you know what? When Tammy comes on with 20 minutes to go, it's not a bad... He's got a lot of pace. He's, you know, he gets a lot of... I wouldn't say he's an unbelievable finisher, but he gets chances. And, mm. um, you know, if we are chasing the game, then I'm sure... That's not a bad bad shout, really. So he reminds me of a young Danny Welbeck. Yeah, a bit, yeah. Again. He's a bit, yeah. Gang, yeah. He's a bit. He's got long legs, strong. You actually see him in person. Mm. Huge. Like he's, yeah, he's a massive. Like he's, he's big as well. But mm. I think he had a bit of the hump, you know, since lockdown. Obviously, he had a few poor games, and obviously Giroud's come in and scored and assisted a lot of goals. So, um, and obviously Werner coming in next season, his, his task is only going to get tougher, really. I, yeah. See him. Mm. He's going to end up our top goal scorer this season, but I can see him mm. go, on yeah. phone maybe in Jan or next season. Just it might not work out for him, but you know we'll mm. see. Mm. No, I think this sets this sets up really nicely in terms of uh, next season for both teams. Really, I, I think there's there's no pressure on either manager to win yeah. a trophy in this first season. I don't mean anyone would have expected that given the prospective situations, i.e., Arsenal collapsing with Emery and Chelsea with the ban. Um, 
However, actually, it would really set them up and really just be such a platform going into the new year for a club like Chelsea. So. Yeah, for Chelsea, definitely. I mean, I think it's big for Arsenal as well. If Arteta goes and wins this competition, he's got to, he's got to go, right, the board's got to back me. Whereas mm. Lampard, it looks like he's got that already. Mm. Um, yeah. We know how ruthless Abramovich can be, but it looks like we've had like 18 months or whatever it is, not signing players. And like, it's go time now. He's splashing the cash. So, I mean, a trophy for Lampard would go, look, I'm doing this. Give me some better players and we can win more and better trophies. So, yeah, um, that's probably the motivation for Lampard personally. So, hmm. so we're going to fire some quick questions at you here, Max, for our counter-attack. Yeah. FA Cup special. Tom, do you want to kick us off? Yeah, go for it. Um, Favourite Arsenal-Chelsea match in memory? Uh, Favourite Arsenal-Chelsea match. There was a 6-0 at Stamford Bridge. That wasn't too bad. <laughs> Salah scored for us, I think. <laughs> Irony. One of the few. And then next one we've got. Well, you've probably answered this already. Arsenal player you take most at Chelsea. <laughs> yeah. Um... We haven't got any centre backs for you. <laughs> oh, Mind yeah. you, Tierney would probably be more needed. Or you could argue then. I think we take Martinez in goal. <laughs> He's looking top. He's looking fantastic. He's very good after the restart. So yeah, mm. Tierney, Abamyang, or Martinez, boy. Shout out to Martinez. That's a that, that's a man who's proper owned his stripes. I've I've spoken to a couple of Reading fans, club. like a Reading fans at work, and they said he was fantastic there, and you know, really was. The catch a lot of things as well, and even mm. Willy Cablera did that on Sunday. Instead of like parrying stuff, Kepa, you just look through your hands. Like, oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Um, f- favorite FA Cup final. Favorite FA Cup final. Um, Chelsea winning it versus Man U, I think. Drogba yeah. scored. Yeah. Hope, I think it was. Yeah. Yeah. Awful, awful game, but it doesn't matter, yeah. does it? When he's in pouring of rain, it doesn't matter. It's just it? huge game. Yeah. We had one against Everton. It was a bit more comfortable, but yeah, those are the ones I think. I'm yeah. Yeah, and last last but not least, it's uh, dinner guests. Uh, we've got a takeaway at yours, beer and pizza. Three guests you can choose, dead or alive, to watch the final with. Who are you picking? Oh God, um, Klopp. I'm obsessed with him at the minute. Uh, it'd be good. It'd show me some things as well, tactically, and just it'd be on the beer as well with me. I was going to say everyone. Everyone's picking Klopp, Max. I don't think he's going to be free, mate. <laughs> <laughs> He's probably going to be an IB for somewhere. Uh, <laughs> Klopp. Who else? DiCaprio. Big fan of Leonardo DiCaprio. Nice. And nice. probably, uh, probably my dad. I say my dad. Nice, nice, oh, brilliant. And to, to to close us out in a, in a sort of thirty seconds or less, ultimately, Max, why are Chelsea going to win on Saturday? Chelsea are going to win because I think they've got far too many um, match winners. Pulisic. Uh, Giroud Willian's even been great recently just think us midfield's more solid Kovacic has been a real star with us this season he's been solid in there Jorginho's looked like he's coming to form um, just we've just got to keep Aubameyang nice and quiet and I think the trophy will be ours and we crack on next season mm. not that's bad, a very good bad. summary not, nice he's summary. Not, the easiest, not the easiest man to keep quiet is he with his goal record but yeah, <laughs> but yeah. lovely summary lovely summary well um I hope you enjoy the match on Saturday. Um, I'm an Arsenal fan myself, so don't want you to enjoy it that much, no. obviously. Um, but uh, enjoy it nonetheless. No worries. Thanks, guys. Thanks for your right. time. Take care. Brilliant, guys. Take Brilliant. care, Max. Be safe. Take it easy. Bye. There's the whistle for half time. Max played a great half there for Chelsea. Thanks again for joining us. Next, we are joined by the beautiful game podcast host, Booj, representing the Gooners. But before then, I'd like to take this opportunity to remind you of our competition at HTO which runs until Wednesday. We're giving away two signed copies of Tony Evans' book, Far Foreign Land. For details on how to enter, check out our Twitter at HTO Football. Good luck. Well, Booge, welcome to HTO Football. It's a pleasure to have you on. I've got to say, I'm I'm a bit of a coward. I've put my Arsenal shirt on for the second half. I didn't have it on for the first one with Matt. (laughs) (laughs) Um, But yeah, obviously, great to have you on the show. Um, Thanks for having me on. Yeah, for the second half of our FA Cup special. Um, your thoughts about the game and the, the lineup? There's going to be a few selection headaches for Arteta, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, I think naturally he probably will lean more towards the sides that he fielded for 
the games um, against City and against Liverpool. Um, I reckon, I mean, you know, uh, um, Martinez, of course, is, is, is number one. Um, with with Lem returning to to training recently, but I think given his performances in recent games, I think there's no way you can look past him. Um, I reckon we'll 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 probably go with um, uh, Tierney, uh, Louise, and probably Holding um, in 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 the back there. Um, I think it, it 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 makes most sense. I, I I'm. <laughs> I, I never thought I'd say this, but um, but it's it's actually going to be quite a blow uh, missing uh, with with uh, Mustafi missing out, right? Um, he's he's been a guy that's blown hot and cold for the whole time he's been at, at the club. But I think prior to him picking up that injury, he was he was in a good run of form. Um, so I'm sure he'd be gutted to to be missing the final. Um, I reckon we probably will go with. Um, I I I reckon we'll, we'll go Bellerin uh, on the right side as as the wing back, mm. um, and I quite I quite liked how uh, Maitland Niles played uh, as as a left wing back uh, mm. uh, recently. You think uh, that was maybe with with the with the Mares thing, a tactical thing with Mares there? I wonder. Yeah, mm. but I I think that could also be uh, a similar tactic that Arteta deploys in this game, just with the pace of. Mm. Bah- Willian on on that side, mm. um, maybe he might want to go with someone a bit more athletic in 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 Maitland Niles versus mm. um, um, uh, uh, Kalasinac. Yeah, or t- yeah. Of course, uh, Xhaka picks himself. I think he's um, he, his his influence and his importance in that team has grown exponentially over the past couple of months. Um, and I just I, I really rate his mentality and the way that he's turned things around. Who would have thought that? Eh? Honestly, literally, it's it, it's one of those. It's another sort of Mustafi situation. You thought a couple of months ago these guys are both going to be out the door come summer, mm. and, and now you know they're you know they're you know, arguably the, the first names on the on, on the team sheet. Um, so I you know Xhaka Sabios, I reckon you know he, he's going to start and, and not want to upset that partnership in in, in there. Um, and then I reckon you know naturally our our, our, mo- our most important player. Highest goal scorer, Abamyang on on the left, uh, Lacazette through the middle, and Pepe um, on on the right. I reckon. Mm. Well, what was interesting for me, I think the, the re- I think most of that picks itself. I just think the, the back three slash five is an interesting one f- mm. w- with the the, the left sided centre back because yeah. Kalasinac just played a lot of games there recently, but I can't see him. No, being given Tierney a did shirt, a good job really. there, didn't he? Tierney did a good job. There, this so. is it. No yeah. nonsense, guy. Like he, he's so reliable. I, 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 I'm always on Twitter, and I, and I can't wax lyrical enough about Kieran Tierney because I just think a guy at that age to have such a mature head on his shoulders, mm. to, to to be so responsible, to be so committed and dedicated. You, you can see it. Like you, you can you can tell the way that he he um, plays is the way that he trains. He's hundred percent committed all the time. You know, he, he makes the right decisions. I, I think he, he, I mean, dare I say, I don't want to jinx it and say it early, but he's got all the ingredients to be, you know, a, a legend of the club, you know. Yeah. As long as he stays fit and he, and he stays in the team, I think he can go on to do great things at this club. Yeah. How, how, do, you see, how do you see the game going? Obviously, Chelsea, um, Chelsea been a bit hit up and down in the season as well. Obviously, Lampard coming in, they've looked very, at times very, very good going forward. Um, mm. They have still been conceding a lot of goals. It's not that they look too shaky, but then it was suddenly at the end of the match and they've conceded another couple or whatever it is. Yeah. And, you know, obviously they, 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 they snuck that Champions League spot um, as well. Uh, Pulisic starting to look good. Uh, they've got some nice That's attacking player. players coming in the summer, so people are playing for their shirt as well. Um, yeah, it's going to be... How do you see it going? So, I, I mean, I get your point, Tom. Um, just around how inconsistent Chelsea have been, and they really have looked. I mean, it's it, it's like that, that classic example of uh, the, the the gym guy that does uh, the, the weights in the top half and like skips leg day kind of thing. So up front, they've got all of these uh, you know attacking players in there. Pulisic, who I think is is an absolutely brilliant player. You've got Mason Mount. 
Um, Giroud has, 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 has turned a corner and has been putting in some top performances of late. Mm. Um, of course, William contributes. And, 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 and attacking-wise, they, they've been great, but they've been quite lacklustre at the back. Um, of course, Kepa with, his, with the uh, absolutely abysmal uh, uh, records that he's been, he's been uh, keeping um, uh, so far this year is, isn't great. And, and I, I don't think Lampard is comfortable or, or knows what his strongest uh, line of defence is at the moment. Um, and I reckon come the summer, they, they probably will make some additions in that department too. I guess my, my only issue is that it kind of feels like for Arsenal so far this season, we've been overly reliant on one, um, Aubameyang's goals. Yeah. And, and, if it, and, and if the goals haven't come from Aubameyang, then we've been overly reliant on mistakes and errors from the other team. Mm. Aside from that, it, it, it's like we, we can't sort of create for love nor money moment um and i can't see where else the goals are going to come from mm. so i i feel like we're almost in a position where if if lampard gets his tactics right and and finds a way to get a bamiang out of the game and as far away from the goal as possible mm. then we're only relying on scraps and if we don't have those scraps coming from those defenders or or mistakes coming from them then we're we're, we're in a really really compromising position yeah, that, that, creativ- that creativity issue came up in the first half with Max, actually, Buj. Um, I think this season, Arsenal, I've been what, lots of, so many matches where there's been half an hour spells, particularly at the beginning of games, yeah. where we don't even get into the opposition's box. It doesn't even, it doesn't even matter who we're playing either. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, when yeah. I, you watch Chelsea, and I watched them the other night against Liverpool, and yeah, having, yes, Liverpool have switched off to a degree. But there was... There was Second half, it, every, every three or four minutes, they were creating golden opportunities, like yeah. just slicing through Liverpool. Um, yeah. So that that would be my concern as an Arsenal fan that we can. I mean, we did it against we did it against City, didn't we? we yeah. It, yeah, 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 yeah. Right there, that's when we was happy for them to have the ball as well. My 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 worry long term with Arsenal is that actually Ceballos and Xhaka of late have looked a better partnership and they've looked um, more steady. But I think that's maybe because they're obviously they're supporting one another. And actually, mm. long term, are they a little bit too similar? You, can, you know, obviously, I know Shaq is a little bit um, deeper. Um, you know, as far as a slightly more of a ball carrier. But essentially, they are still that tempo of player, which yeah. is pretty similar. So they're helping one another. And I think long term, if we ever ever want to get back to truly competing, and I'm not saying we're going to be there in the in the, in the short term, um, I, I wonder if one of them would need to give way to someone a bit different. And the other one would need to be yeah. stepping up. So, like um, one of your guests the other week, you know, Joe Willock, for example, you know, someone that yeah. probably probably deserves a bit more game time. You'd you could argue, um, yeah. he's, he's yeah, that yeah, different player that Tom's alluding to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like and that I think that's that's probably play. the reason why we've been linked with like players in that in that kind of mould as well, right, mm-hmm. Tom? You know, yeah, definitely. Thomas Party uh, um, uh, links don't you know they, they they don't seem to be going away. Yeah, we, 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 you know, party would be amazing. Um, I'm still not, I don't want to believe the hype yet. Like in terms yeah. of the hype, not about him, but about us getting him. <laughs> like, yeah, I believe yeah, the hype yeah. around him. Uh, it's more about us actually having a chance of getting him. Uh, but we'll yeah. see. 100%. Do you know what? The, the other thing as well that I think about is um, a, a really, really key component in, in all of this it, it, and is um, uh, mentality. So I just wonder if, on one hand, there could potentially be some scar tissue um, left off the back of the Europa um, League mm. last year. Mm. Yeah, yeah. the situation, you know, it's it, 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 it's all to play for, super important game for us. Mm. We need it more than they do. You know, every, we're, we're odds on to, to, to win mm. um, and, and we come unstuck. Of course, albeit it's, it's a completely different cast in that um, they haven't got the talisman uh, Eden Hazard, but they they still do have players that can that can hurt us, mm. and and I just feel like in key periods throughout this season, when it's really mattered, right? When it's it's still left in our hands to to to, to make it happen, we've not quite made it. You know, all we need to do, right? Just win win these games on the bounce, and and we're still have a chance to to make Europe for the league. Can we do it? Mm. Just, do you know what I mean? Um, yeah. The irony is as well. I mean, under Wenger, we had, we had years, didn't we, where we were we weren't beating the top sides, and we were but we were doing decent against the other teams home and away. Whereas at the moment, Arteta seems to have picked that record up slightly. You know, with the win over City, 
Yeah. Uh, really good point at Stamford Bridge. We beat Liverpool at home, beat Man U at home. He's, his record against yeah. the top six is arguably best we've had for 20 yeah. years. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. You talk about that that Baku final though, Bujan. I mean, we could even go a couple of years prior and look at the seventeen final and wonder if Chelsea would be looking for their own FA revenge. Yeah, um, yeah Giroud's yeah, Giro's yeah. last touch of that game, one of the last touches, would have been that cross for Ramsey, right? Yeah, but, you know, you need to get Ramsey, Ramsey back just for the final. Just get Ramsey yeah. back for just for a Wembley FA Cup final. <laughs> you know, um, yeah, interesting I... you said there about about um, you know Chelsea. So I was needing it more than Chelsea, and we we, we were discussing with Max that like. The irony is that I don't think even manager will be uh, expected to win a trophy in their first season. But with Lampard obviously getting the back in um, that he's already getting in the market for next year after the transfer ban, like this is a chance for Arteta to win something and say, please back me. Please show. Mm-hmm. That's for me the thing. It's a chance for Arteta to say, look, I've, I've delivered a trophy in my first three quarters of a season. Please go and back me in the transfer market. Mm. Yeah, I mean, yeah, we we Tom and I say this regularly in the last few months as well. Like, we are spending money, aren't we? The, the, the football club do spend money. It's just it's it's how it's being spent. That is a massive gripe. Um, my, the the gripe is that in terms of the investment, do we have the right people in place to make the right kind of uh, of signings? Right. Mm. Do they do they do they understand and identify where we're at, at, at as a club where we're at as a club at the moment and, and and what kind of phase we're in and therefore the kind of signings that we need to make mm. um, and I think that absolutely will be our um, in, in 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 the next coming months and, and, and years. Of course, he he understands that we're in that sort of transitional phase, or to be shedding millions and millions of pounds on you know, uh, stop gaps, essentially. Yeah, completely. So we, we recently have been linked with, with, with William, who's, of course, out of, of, of contract, I think, um, uh, in the summer. Um, and also the other players that we're linked with, to some extent, I feel like they would just worsen the current situation that we have in that we have, you know, average players on existing uh, wages is that we can't move on, have very little resale value, and so are running down their contracts, and and so that's part of the reason why we're so cash strapped because we can't afford the uh, sort of the wages. Of course, of course, Aubameyang's come out and you know he's he he sort of uh, named his price in terms of you know what what he wants, and and we're sort of trying to you know scrape together the the, the money to 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 get that that over line because we can't afford to to lose him, but I think. It, it's 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 more important than ever that we get the recruitment in the summer right. Mm. Um, I think you're, you're you're bang on because it's we've got to recognise where we are and let's not yeah. try and pretend that actually buying two or three 28, 29, 30 year old established stars but who may be seeing their best days is going to be enough to bridge the gap. You you've got to be playing buying players like Tierney who are actually yeah. saying, you know what? this guy's going to be my guy for five or six years. And even if he doesn't hit his straps for 18 months or he's a bit injury prone in that first year, we know we're buying for the long term. Because you look at some of the squad, you look at signing like Socrates when that was made for 17, 18 million. What, what player are you getting at that age profile for that kind of money in this market? Yeah. You know it's not a top, top player because that would, yeah. it wouldn't be going at 17 million. And it's clearly not a talent or a one for the future at, that, at the age profile. So mm-hmm. actually, what kind of signing is that? And we can't be doing that in the summer. I'd rather... You know, hold our hold our cards and say, do you know what? This summer we'll go all out and buy the centre back partner we need for Saliba. Yeah. Next summer we'll go all out and buy the centre mid, or the other way around, a bit like Liverpool did when they recognised they need Virgil, and the summer after they go and get Allison, and just pinpoint the right person for the next five or six years growth, and just be realistic with where we are. We're not going to overnight 100%. by signing by signing some 120k a week for 20 million pound, 29, 30 year olds, because that's, they're not going to take us to the next level. We need to build something. Too right, too right. Couldn't agree more. Let's have. Should we have some fun now? Just to yeah, let's let's a serious <laughs> chat. <laughs> right. So we've got our counter attack challenge on HTO for you, Booj. Tom's going right. to kick us off. Okay. Um. You yeah, some quick fire ones. Uh, what's your favourite Arsenal Chelsea match of all time? It's got to be the FA Cup final when uh, Ramsey scored that 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 goal. For me, that's. 
love that. Absolutely love that one. Not good bad. time. To, good time to say that one, yeah. Next one we've got is yeah. Chelsea, Chelsea player you'd take in the Arsenal squad. There might be a few, but, but just do us one. <laughs> That's quite. Um, oh, Pulisic. Mm. Slotting on the left wing, Aubameyang up top. Seamlessly. Yeah. There we go. Uh, Favourite FA Cup final? Is it, is it the 17 one again or number one springs to mind? Um, final against Hull. That, mm. that meant so much to me. Um, it was... Been so long. The release. It was, yeah, yeah. I think, do you know what? I think it, that was, that was the, the, the uh, emotion that I felt more than anything else. It was just sheer and utter relief. And I've never felt yeah. so at peace ever. So <laughs> that's, got that's got to be the one. And then the last, the last one we've got, you're having a takeaway at yours, Booge, pizza and a few beers, three dinner guests of your choice, dead or alive, who are you inviting over? Oh, uh, 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 Arsenal, is this like... Anything you like. Um, you can be as random as you want. Arsene Wenger. Um, Thierry Henry Nice oh, I'm going to keep it along the theme of Arsenal uh, Come on, there's only one more, isn't there? Righty, surely <laughs> <laughs> You know what? I was going to I was going to go completely like left field with this one <laughs> Just because I've wanted to just sit down and have a conversation with this guy for so long but it's going to be a very controversial pick. And that is Stan Kroenke. Ooh, great shout. I, 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 I want an audience with that man. <laughs> I want a few minutes just to chat with him. In an empty room, yeah? <laughs> you know what yeah. I mean? Like, I've just got yeah. so many unanswered questions. And I think that'd be a perfect opportunity to, to get him in a, a more relaxed setting so we can sort of, you know, Relax, yeah. saying watching our, our, bevies, just after yeah. Arsenal's won the final, you know that sort of thing. Um, yeah. It, okay, if you're going to hit us, hit us in 30 seconds. Let's get some positivity for the Arsenal. Why are Arsenal going to win the final? Um, Arsenal are going to win the final because the club understand the importance of it. Uh, Arteta said it himself. This club, a club with such rich history, such a huge fan base, absolutely needs to be uh, playing at, at the very top. Um, and, and in Europe, we of course understand where we're at as a club at the moment and know that, you know, Rome wasn't built in a, in a day. It's not going to happen overnight, but we need to start putting the building blocks in place for us to push the club on and, and move forward. We understand that we need to recruit quite extensively in, in, in the summer and we need to, we need to go again. Um, and, and being in Europe gives us that opportunity to, you know, um, go out and, and, and recruit the level of player that's going to move us forward um, so because because of that simple reason um, and of course because of the fact that we, we, we can do it in, in the big games we've shown that we, we can do it in the big games in the past couple of weeks there's absolutely no reason why we can't do that um, again come Saturday oh, Arteta had two FA Cups as a player hopefully he makes it as a hat-trick on Saturday eh? 100% yeah. <laughs> thanks, thanks so much for your time Boo just been fantastic I was just a little, uh, little, little apology. I did try and get Michael Buffer on, but he was for your intro, but he didn't reply to my DM. <laughs> <laughs> that's quality. That is absolutely quality. That's the, that's the godfather, that guy. Yeah, to be Michael fair, he's still not, he ain't read it yet, so we'll see. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He'll just come to it late. He'll come to it late. I remember seeing something that they, um, that I think it was Hearn was saying that, like, they were dropping, dropping Buffer like six million for one show for a Joshua fight. And I was like, the guy literally was in the ring for two minutes at the beginning and he was getting six million. And I was just like, hey, I've missed my calling. I've missed my career. Path. Honestly, that guy, yeah, yeah. I think he's got, hasn't he got, um, he's got insurance on his voice, I think. Yeah. We, got, should, yeah. we, we should all swap days with him, shouldn't we? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> he could just get him to do the intro for our pods. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, thanks again for your time. That's been brilliant. Yeah, I really appreciate that. Man. Thank you very much for having me on. Hopefully, we, we, we get a, a chance to do it again sometime soon. Yeah, yeah. We win the final. We we got we got to get another another one in. Yeah, yeah, all, the, all the best. Yeah, brilliant. Thank all right, guys. Catch you soon. Yeah. See you later. Bye. That was a good chat. What do you think about your that, that counter? If that was for you, though, so like you know, what's your favourite Arsenal awesome Chelsea match from yesterday? Oh, Arsenal Chelsea match. Um, 
I'd, I'd go for Canu's hat trick. Yeah, big shout. Big Stanford shout. Bridge, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think um, mine would probably be two or three years before that. You know, the three-two uh, win, Nigel Winterburn. Um, the yeah, year after with the double. Yeah, yeah. I'm having I'm having flashbacks now. Silvino. Yeah, you've got um, like a left back. You've got like Nigel Winterburn, who obviously doesn't pop up with too many goals. We got Arsenal going and win the double that year, and for him mm. to find a screamer to beat Chelsea three two. Mm. That's pretty. That's pretty special. Pretty special. I remember the first. Uh, like, do you remember the first Jose Mourinho showdown at Highbury when we when we when we drew two two. That's a huge game. Huge game. Henri yeah. goal. Like, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Big yeah. game. Big game. And that was sort of two titans at the time because obviously Chelsea with their money they just arrived in a big way. We were defending champions. Mm. Um, yeah. Huge game. Huge game. In yeah. terms of favourite FA Cup final, for me, probably, I mean, Hull, Hull is a great shout just because we've gone so many, so long without all trophy win. Yeah. So that meant so much. Yeah. Um, I'll, you know, that's, that's got to be up there. And that, ironically, actually, I think um, the, the Chelsea 2002 FA Cup final as well, mm. you know, Ray Parler and Freddie Lundberg. Yeah. You know. Yeah. I'd yeah. probably, I'd, I'd agree with both of those. I'd maybe just make it a three with Vieira's last kick in Cardiff. Yeah, different type mm-hmm. of game. We weren't very good, but yeah, uh-huh. huge, huge. Yeah, just just that kind of relief when that went in because we were battered, weren't we, for 120 minutes, really? Um, yeah, absolutely. But yeah, so um, we, we, we've had someone writing on Twitter and say uh, Jason, oh, who I presume is a Man United fan, mentioning uh, the Cantona winner against Liverpool. Yeah, that's probably mm-hmm. a huge game as well. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? Like, was you that, know, two was huge that the final? Was that one. the final where Liverpool turned up with those cream suits? It might have been, you know. Yeah, I think it, it might have been. been. Yeah. It's like 94 or 95. I can't remember the year. Yeah. But like the Cantona, 1-0. Like, Liverpool and United, like, you can't get much bigger in an FA Cup final. Yeah, and, um, mm. yeah that's pressure. That's pressure. Yeah. yeah, That's delivery. We've also had another one from uh, Tom from Liverpool. Um, this one hurts to, to mention. But the, the Owen goal, the, 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 the second of the, his brace at, in the yeah. Millennium Stadium when they beat Arsenal. Um, We're all... Should have won that comfortably. Yeah, the Henri um, goal did, well, wasn't disallowed, but like the shot, ham, Honcho handball on on the line, and that puts us two 0 up, mm. and that's game over. Yeah, you know, and it, you know, so yeah, that's a devastating one. I think well, I must well, have been about. I was probably about eleven at the time. I remember. I remember watching it like on my on my tummy, like in the in the lounge, just like crying my eyes out when that goal went in. Yeah. Um. Not not right. Not written in for this episode particularly, but I remember I was talking to the uh, to Jason York a couple of weeks ago. And one of the ones that came up was that the upset the Wimbledon upset against Liverpool. Mm-hmm. You know, Laurie Sanchez beating the all-conquering Liverpool team yeah. of the 80s. Yeah. FA Cup final. And it's a shame in a way that Cup finals moved away a little bit away from that Cup killer mm. upset thing. But, you know, that, that's a bit tricky as well. Yeah, Obviously, I can, we, we I can think of that, that, that. That's probably one of the David and Goliath finals. I can remember. Uh, there's another one. The Wigan. Wigan, Wigan yeah, Wigan's done it recently, you know. Yeah. There's but been you're, you're right, it doesn't happen. Year, it switched, that kind of stuff. But yeah, yeah in general, it's getting few and far between these days. Yeah, and hopefully, hopefully the final on Saturday is a bit more competitive than last season's. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I hope so. Well, yeah. I mean, the last two FA Cup finals, Arsenal Chelsea, Arsenal won. So mm. for me personally, and obviously for yourself, but hopefully it's a hat trick. Yeah. But equally, Baku looms large, so we will see. 